So let's build our register transfer circuit. So our register transfer circuit is going to have two registers, an A and a B register. So we want to uh, insert our 8-bit D register that we just built. And we're going to want another one. Now, a register transfer circuit has as one of the key elements a multiplexer because we're going to want to be able to output onto our bus either this output or this output, or alternatively, we want some switches from the outside world to assert a signal to our bus so that we can put a value out there. So actually, um, let's put our own set of inputs down here with that with a bit width of eight. So let's label this one A. Let's label this one B, and let's label this one I for input. Now, each one of these inputs are going to go into a multiplexer. Now, this multiplexer, of course, will need to have a bit width of 8, and it will need to have a control size of 2, because we need a control size of two would be two to the second power, uh, or, or in other words, four uh, different inputs. So the register A is going to go to go into input zero, and register B is going to go into input one. So I want to see the results of these registers, let's do that. Let's put in an output showing the result of the A register. And this output is, of course, going to be 8 bits. And let's flip around the orientation to the right side so that I can wire it up. Likewise, we're going to want to see the output of the B register, and that needs to be 8 bits. Okay, so finally, we want the input, this input I, to go into the second, really it's the third, but it's number two, labeled number two, part of the multiplexer. Okay. So the output of the multiplexer now needs to be wired up to both D inputs on both of our registers because, of course, they need these registers need to be able to read what's on the data bus. So here is one of the D inputs. And let's route this one around here. like so. Now, finally, we need some control signals. So we need an input. Since this is a control signal of width uh, 2, we need an input of width 2. And let's orient this one um, up. And let's label this S1SO. So we need a way to, to be able to enable each one of these for loading. So let's create some inputs. And let's call this one load B for bar. And let's create another one. And let's, let's see, load, load bar. Maybe we should call it load bar B and load bar A, just to keep these straight. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
And then finally, we need a clock because these things are, are only going to transition when the clock is high. So let's add ourselves a clock. And we need to wire up the clock. And we need to see, we need to be able to see what the output on the data bus is going to look like. So let's put an output out here. Um, we're going to call it our data bus. And of course it needs a bit width of eight and it will be connected like so. Let's test this out. This should be complete. So our control signal two um, should provide when these signals are changed, this multiplexer should route the signal to the data bus. So let's put a arbitrary signal in here. And so it is indeed, when I set these, it's showing up on the data bus because our control signal is set to, to uh, two, binary two. All right, so now what, I, what we wanna do is we wanna load this signal that's on the data bus into register A. So what we do is when we change this load signal to um, active low, the next clock signal, we should see this signal transfer over here. And indeed we do. Uh, now we want to do a register transfer from register A to register B. Let's go ahead though, just for, just to keep ourselves honest, we're gonna set our input switches, because we're, uh, again, where our select signal is still at number two right here. So we're gonna set all of our input switches to zero. So now we have nothing on the bus, that makes sense. So now though, we wanna get this signal, because we're, remember we're going to transfer this signal to this uh, this register. We want to get this signal onto the data bus. So how do we do that? Well, we need our select um, signal source to be binary zero. So let's turn that to zero. Now you'll notice we're outputting the value of this A register onto the data bus. Now we want to transfer it over to here. So how do we do that? Well, we want the load signal for the B register to go zero. And when that goes zero at the next clock signal, we'll, we should see this data bus value get transferred over to here. And we do. So we now know that this register transfer circuit is now working.